That's the most stupid question I ever heard. How dumb does it get? I mean, my gosh, it's a criminal. Terrorist activity is criminal activity. Of course, a criminal is subject to becoming radicalized. But then what I didn't expect was the answer. Criminals seek, on some level, conscious or not, criminals seek redemption. They seek forgiveness. Radical terrorist theology says that the minute you die in the name of the cause, no matter what you've done, you're forgiven. No matter who you've hurt, you're healed. But, wow, what a correlation. I haven't thought of it like that before. And the follow-up question was, if that's true, what can organizations and communities that are committed to forgiveness and reconciliation that aren't terrorists, what, what, what can the good ones do? What can churches do? What can houses of worship do? What, what can positive sources of redemption do to offer that perspective so that people don't do that, don't, don't become so radicalized? Now, the answer to that was, instead of proceeding from a foundation of feeling unjust and hurt and negative and then reaching out and looking for the hope, looking for the vision, looking for healing and forgiveness, instead to try, and here's the really hard part, to try to jump into what we're looking for and to be in a positive place and to be in a visionary place and a forgiving, reconciling place, and then be able to reach out to others who may be hurting from that place of reconciliation and forgiveness. Do we get the difference? It's hard to sometimes communicate that distinction. I think it's even harder to do it. And it's hardest of all because if we manage it, my friends, it's it's not that we're going to go and convert a terrorist, stop a terrorist from happening, becoming a terrorist. We're, we're not going to do that. That's a grand, grand vision. Instead, think of the people in our world who need forgiveness of any kind, who need to be reconciled with God and experience God's love in any way. Those are the people we come, more often than not, into touch with day by day. Those are the people who are our neighbors and our friends and the people at work. Those are ourselves from time to time who need that forgiveness and that reconciliation. So, in as much as we can have and live out of the visionary place, that God has prepared for us. In as much as we can do that, we are empowered to help others in that same spirit. So, it's sort of all where we find ourselves standing and how we embrace the vision and the sight that Jesus gives each of us this day. I'd like to leave us with the very empowering and yet warming words of a visionary in our society, a wonderful Episcopalian who is buried at the National Cathedral. Many of you may know these words. They're pretty famous. But Helen Keller once said, 
The only thing in life worse than blindness is having sight and no vision. <laughs>